everything is everything to me. It's everything. It's everything to me. It's my brother, my brother, my sister, my brother. It's everything to me. It's everything to me. It's everything to me. It's my father, my mother, my sister, my brother. It's everything to me. Oh yes, it's everything. It's everything to me. It's everything. It's everything to me. It's my father, my mother, my sister, my brother. It's It's everything to me. It me when I'm hungry. It's everything to me. It's my father, my mother, my sister, my brother. It's everything to Everything to me is everything. Is everything to me is my father, my mother, my sister, my brother. Is everything to me. He loves me and it's all me. Is everything to me. He loves me and it's all me. Is everything to me. Is my father. shall take our scripture reading from the book of first kings chapter 18 we read from verse 30 through to 37 and Elijah said unto all the people come near unto me and all the people came near unto him and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down and Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. Amen. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. Yes. Verse 33. And he poured, and he put the wood, the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. And he said, and he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. Verse 37. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. That Elijah the prophet came near and said. Lord God of Abraham. Yes. Isaac. And of Israel, yes. let it be known this day yes. that thou art God in Israel and that, that I am thy servant. Yes. And that I have done all these things at thy word. Amen. Hear me, O Lord. Amen. Hear me. That these people may know that thou art the Lord God. 
and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Jesus took me in, and then from heaven, from heaven filled my soul. He packed my heart in love, and brought my name above, and told a little talk with Jesus makes it more. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles, he will get our faith and strong, and he will us about. Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. Amen. Amen. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. Amen. 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 Knowing God. Amen. 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 Knowing God. The most important thing to know in life is knowing God. There is difference between knowing God and knowing about God. Let's look at knowing about God. Many people know that in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. And many people know that God created the light. Many people know that God sent his only begotten son to die for our sins. Just like the lesson we learned in the Sunday school, the Pharisees, they knew everything about God. They knew everything about Jesus. They knew he was from the lineage of David. 
They knew he was a carpenter's son. They knew his history from birth. But yet, they did not know Jesus. You can see it is different to know somebody and to know about somebody. I can tell you, I know about the Prime Minister of this country. But I cannot tell you I know her. Because for you, for me to know her, I must have had a chat with her. I must have created an environment where the two of us would have had one contact, exchange words, and so on. I must have, in one form or the other, met with her to discuss. Then I can walk out and say, I know her. Because in the process of that discussion, in the process of that interaction, I get to know some things about her, and she gets to know some things about me. Then I can say, I know her. So it is in our relationship with God. Coming to church is different from knowing God. Amen. Yes. Bless you. Knowing the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is different from knowing God. Yeah. Yes. Then, how do we know God? We can only know God when we have a personal relationship. Amen. Let no one deceive you that because you are a member of a church, you know God. Let no one deceive you because you are into charity, you are doing morals, you are doing things that everyone can see is good, then you know God. It may all amount to knowing about God. You know that God is good. God likes good things. God wants you to do good things to your neighbor. Yes, you have known about God. But do you know the God? Bless you. Bless you. It is possible to be in a trap or in a, in, in a snare of coming in and going out day in, day out. Coming to worship and go in, day out. And yet you don't know God. The Pharisees read the Bible from beginning to the end. They knew the prophecy about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They knew everything about the, 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 the prophecy that their, their fathers had prophesied concerning Jesus Christ. And here was Jesus Christ, they didn't know him. Is that not the situation of many of us? But the Lord has brought us here this morning because yeah. he wants us to know him. Amen. Not just knowing him, he wants to share about the eternal life. Yeah. Bless you. No wonder he said in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 8. Remember when I said, if I am to know somebody, I need to go close to such a person who share things. We share ideas, we share views, and we get to know ourselves the better. So for us to know God, God is now saying, come, let us share. Come, I want to share eternal life with you. But the question now is that, what do you want to share with God? What do you have? The Bible says, all our righteousness is like what? Fill the rag. What do we have to offer God? What do we have to share with him? And yet he's calling us. No wonder he said in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. He said, come. Let us reason together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Say, Though your sin be as scarlet, it shall be as white as snow. Yeah. Though they be red, they will be as wool. That is God wanting you to know him because he already knows you. Can you see the part God has played? You want to know God, there is nothing to offer. There is nothing to share. All that you have is sin. 
And yet, Jesus is saying, I don't mind the depth of your sin. I don't mind the color. I don't mind whatever form you have been to. In whatever form you have gotten yourself deep into. He said, come. Just come with that. Let us reason together. What is the reasoning? God has a plan for eternal life for you. God knows that after your trip here on earth, you are going to a destination. And God does not want you to just leave this world and go to a destination where you will be lost forever. And that is why he's pleading and saying, come. As many as the Lord is calling this morning, may we answer his call. We want to look at few people who knew God. Remember, to know God, you have a personal relationship. What does that personal relationship mean? You have come to God and share your sins with him. To say, this is what I have to offer. This is all I am, God. Please take me as I am. That means you acknowledge, you confess. And when you promise, I wholeheartedly, God, I want to know you. I don't just want to be a ceremonial church goer. And because God has called you, he will say, okay, don't worry. Now that you have admitted that you are a sinner, that is the purpose for which I sent my only begotten son who went to the cross of Calvary, died, shared his blood, and I am going to apply that blood in your heart so that all those debts, all those sin, all those iniquity that you have come to me with, I will wash them away as if you have never sinned. And when that is done, the songwriter says, I have a new life. Then you have a new life. Then you now have a relationship with God. Irrespective of the distance, the gap between God and man, God now comes and dwells in your heart. Amen. 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 No, you just wonder, who is man that God is so mindful of? Can you see the greatness of his love? (coughs) There is a big gap between man and God. But Jesus coming to this world has died and has shed his precious blood and has closed that gap. And that makes us walk to God at any moment and say, Father, I need your help. And God answers. Amen. 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 There are many people in the Bible, men that knew God, they had personal relationship with God. Remember the text we read? It said, they that know their their God shall be strong and do exploit. Amen. 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 If I say, how many people want to be strong here? I'm sure you all want to raise your hand. Because you know when you are strong, you can do exploit. Yes. Many of us want to do exploit. But the only thing there is that if we must do exploit, if we must succeed, if we must be what we want to be and we want God, God wants us to be, we must know the power holder. Yes. And that is God. If you want to be strong, you must know God. And remember, knowing God is having a personal relationship with him. As many as are here this morning that desire to be strong, not just be strong, they want to do exploit. Like the men we are going to look at this moment, the Lord is here for you. And he's going to strengthen you. As long as you are determined to know him. In Exodus 14, verse 13, we want to look at a man called Moses. Moses knew God. Remember when God called him? He answered the call of God with reference. God saved him. He had a personal relationship with God. No wonder when situations came, When things that look impossible come our way. When there is no time to start 
looking for God, but the only time available for you is to deal with that situation. You see the importance of knowing God before situations come our way? Because this life is full of challenges. And that is why when we know God, we are guided. We have assurance. It was because Moses knew God. That was why he said what we want to read now in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. He said, and it came to pass, <coughs> Exodus 14, verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand see, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you Show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Amen. Amen. You know your Egyptian. You know who they are to you. You know what challenge stands as Egyptian. But can you confidently say to yourself, Fear ye not. If you look at the, the, the power in that word, it is because there is somebody behind him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When you know God, you will not fear anything. Yeah. Even though he was looking at the Egyptians, and on the right were mountains, on the left were mountains, and the way ahead was the Red Sea. To man it was impossible. But when you know God, you will never see impossibility. Yes. Moses did not see any impossibility. He had assurance that, remember at this point in time, his assurance was not because he had seen a path. There was no path. They were caged. And here were the enemies approaching. But he had the confidence and he could tell others. You know, when you know your God, you will sell that God to others. Amen. 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 When you know your God, you will not be ashamed. No wonder Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Yes. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Yes. Amen. Amen. He was so confident that he knew this God. Even though you are afraid, don't worry, don't be afraid. I am giving you an assurance that these Egyptians you are seeing, you will see them no more. Yes. Amen. May that be your portion. Amen. Let's look at Joshua. When you know your God, you can command, you can do what only God does. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. With the height of technology, I've not heard that anyone has designed or researched or done something to have told the sun and the moon to stop. Joshua did it. You can do it. Amen. 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 You remember in Genesis, God made the sun and the moon. And nobody has control over it. You know what Joshua did? The courage. It's like, God, <laughs> I know you made the farmer met. I know you made the sun, but for this time, I want to ask you, lock it up. Yeah. I need a, a time to fight my enemy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Joshua, because he knew God, remember the text, they that know their God yeah. shall be strong yes. and we do exploit. Joshua knew his God and he moved the hand of God. Stop the sun. Stop the moon. The Bible told us no one has ever done it since then. Amen. Amen. How about the walls of Jericho? Many of us. You, you, you know, do you know one thing I love about the walls of Jericho? The description. They said it is so thick that people, 
that the walls is a foundation to building. Is your problem or your challenges as big as that of the walls of Jericho? Know your God. Amen. When you know your God in obedience to what God tells you to do, when you do it just like Joshua did. Before Joshua was a challenge, he wanted to break into through the, the, the city of Jericho. And here was the wall. And he met God. This was another time for a business. And God gave him instruction. Don't bother yourself. You don't need to look for anything to blast the wall. Just sing unto the Lord. Amen. 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 Can you look at the size of the wall, the challenges? And look at the weapon. To man, it is foolishness. Is it not? So you you want to tell me now you have a, a home office challenge. And by the door are the law enforcement agents. They want to pick you and throw you back to your country. And God says, start singing. Does it make sense? But when you know your God, it will make sense. All that God wants from you is obedience. Whatever the challenge may be. Whatever the walls of Jericho. Remember, the key is knowing your God. And when you know your God, you will do exploits. How about Elijah in 1 King chapter 17 verse 1? We know about the rain. Though in our days we do hear people command the rain to fall. At times they ask it to stop. At times they ask it to fall in one area and don't fall in another area. Where? God knows if that is true. But I know the firmament belongs to the Lord. He does whatsoever it pleases him. Elijah, because he knew his God and he wanted to communicate a message to the children of Israel, he commanded that there should not be any rain. And it came to pass. When we know our God, we will ask for anything and it shall be so. Amen. Amen. Now I want to go to Elijah. In the text we read, First King chapter 18. First King chapter 18. This time around, we are not looking at that text in relation to the uh, repairing the broken altars. But we are looking at it in the context of Elisha knowing his God. We all know what happened. It was a time to prove. There are situations... When we find ourselves in a situation where the people of the world wants to know the God that you know. They want to know the strength of the God that you claim to know. It is not that they do not know about that God. But they want to see the reflection of that God in you. That was the case of Elisha. He was stand alone. But you know, one with God is what? Majority. Majority. Amen. You will find yourself in a situation where there will be a challenge. There, there will be a kind of debate. There, there may be 99 over there. You may be the only one on this side. But never you forget that for the fact that you are the only one there, the moment you know your God, you will do exploit. Yeah. Elijah said unto the people, Come near unto me. That's the command. Yeah. One person in the midst of many people. Just one person. When they have done all their best, they've tried to call upon their God that has eyes and cannot see. To call upon their uh, God that has head but cannot think. That has hand but cannot walk. And when that God failed, He commanded, he said, come unto me with confidence. Okay, after you finish all your trial and error, come, let me show to you the God that I know. Yeah. He is a God. Yeah. He is a different God from your God. Yeah. 
when we know about the almighty God and we do not know him with personal relationship, we are certainly going to have other gods that we know. That was the case of the children of Israel at this point in time. They knew about the God of Israel. They knew everything about him. But they did not know him at this point in time. They forsake, they, 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 they are forsaking him. And they've gone to bars. They've gone to gods that cannot help them. And Elijah was going to prove to them. Whenever you are in life, in challenges of life, if you know this God, stand by him. Amen. And God will stand by you. Yeah. You see, if you know God, the God that I serve, you can never have any reproach. Because God will not allow it. At this point in time, Elijah had confidence. He said, come. He called them together. And in verse 31, Elijah took 12 stones. If we read down to 33, evidence to prove that as much as he knew this God, he was ready to follow him precept by precept. Yeah. When you know God, you will want to follow him step by step. Yes. When he asks you, move here, you will obey. When they ask you, sit down, you will sit down. Yeah. When they ask you, walk up, you will walk. Yeah. This was what Elijah did. He followed the precept. He arranged it the way it should be. And now, he moved to the next level. He wanted to prove the impossibility. Yes. Uh, we've had uh, incidents of uh, fire everywhere. And... Uh, Firemen have been trying their best to put it down. And what have they been using? Water. Is it not? And here was Elijah saying, okay, that water that is the enemy of fire, to prove to you that my God is a God of all impossibility, pour the water on the altar. Does it make sense to any human being? You want fire to come down and consume something. And yet you say, pour the water. You know what? Verse 34 said, and he said, do it the second time. Amen. Amen. Can you see that confidence? Yeah. You have put the first water. Do it again. Yeah. I am sure that when my God get, brings this fire down, it will consume that water. Yeah. And they did it the second time. He was not satisfied. Yeah. He said, do it again. Yeah. The third time. And they did it. They say, and the water ran about the altar and filled the trench also with water. Amen. Amen. Our God is a God of all impossibilities. Yeah. When things that look impossible, things that does not even make sense to us as human beings, God has power over it. Yes. And if you know that God, you will know his power. Amen. Yeah. When you know God, to know God means to love him. To know God means when, when you love him, you will trust him. And when you trust him, you will obey him. Amen. 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 And after that, God must have said, okay, my servant has done his part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He has shown to them that he is my servant. I think it is now my turn. When you do your part, God will not fail to do his part. Amen. When you do your part, God will never fail. Even many a times we fail in our part, God in his mercy is still faithful. He is forever faithful. I love the prayer of Elijah. And it came to pass, verse 36, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art the God in Israel. <coughs> Take note. When you know this God, you will be glad to advertise him. You will not be ashamed of the gospel. 
When you know this God, you will be bold to stand and say, I am a child of the living God. In whatever situation, even at the point of death, you will gladly stand and say, I know him. I know this God. We will look at people that took that stand and said, and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. You know, he was reminding him, God, I want you to prove to this world that you are God and that I am your servant. How many of us can boldly say they are servant of God? If you don't have a relationship with God, you cannot say you are his servant, nor his child, nor his son. You must have a relationship with God. It was because Elijah had a relationship with God. That was why he said, God, prove to them that you are God, one. And that let them know that I am your servant. He was so sure. May God give us that assurance. Amen. Bless you. And he come, you know, no wonder the Bible says we should command the Lord. Mm. And he said, Hear me, O Lord. Yes. Hear me. Amen. 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 Hear me, O Lord. How many times? What situation are you? Yeah. Have you stood confidently and said, God, answer my prayer? Yeah. And the Lord will hear you. Amen. As he heard Elijah. Say, hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. Amen. 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 God does not waste time. He hears and answers the prayer of his children. When you know God, God does not waste time. You don't have to pray for, for... with any ceremony, yes. When you know God, tell him God hears and answers prayers. Amen. He may not have, he may not make it manifest at the time you want it. But God has his own time. Yes. But when you know God, at any point in time, you open your mouth and ask. That's what he said in his word in Matthew 7. That ask and he shall receive. Seek and he shall find. When you knock, he shall be opened. Not that I may think. When you know God and you ask, he will answer. And immediately God answered. Then fell, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and lick up the water. The water that should have quenched the fire. But the fire quenched the water. Amen. 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 The fire dried up the water. The fire that was supposed, the water that was supposed to quench the fire. When you know God, things will change. Yes. Bless you. In your favor, God breaks protocols. Yes. We've heard testimonies of people who were supposed to, to to get a particular position. There were series of protocol, and God put all that aside and took them to the top. Amen. God can do yours. Amen. All you need to do is know Him. Amen. 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 How about the three children, uh, Hebrew children? This, I tremble. Yeah. Do you know why I tremble at these children? They got to a point, in fact, I can classify that as knowing God too much in advance. Yeah. Let me use the human language. You know what? They said, even if this God that we are standing for, Amen. You see, they, 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 they know this God to such an extent that they, they now said, okay, even though this God decided that he was not going to deliver us, yes. we will not deny him. Yeah. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Amen. Have you gotten to that level? That is not the level of Christianity babes. Have you grown up to that level? Many of us are still like Christian babes. Where when one wind of change comes our way, we start to doubt, is there God or not? We are still in that state where one trouble, difficulty, maybe wall of Jericho or Red Sea or, 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 or the mountain or the, the, the challenge comes our way, we are still in doubt, is there God? Am I sure there is still God? If there is God, will I go through this stage? Now, the children, these three Hebrew children, 
said this at this point in time they were going into the fire they were to punish them with fire and they said we are ready to go in even if the god we are standing for that is making you to take us to fire even if he decide to turn his back away from me from us we will not deny him Amen. have you gotten to that level that is where the Lord is taking us to. Yes. To higher grants. Yes. To higher grants. Where even if the whole world today, even if God himself comes down and stands in front of you and says, I am no more God, you will say, no, you are God. I know you from the beginning. Yes. Have we gotten to that level? Amen. Or we are seeing a level where we are still doubting. May God come and help us. Amen. And did God fight for them? God did not want to put them to shame. And God cannot put you to shame. He, God knew. You do know God honored them. Because of their faith. When you stand up, God will honor you. Amen. You all know the story. From theory, they became four. Imagine. God said, no, the faith of these boys is just too much. Young people. These are three Hebrew boys. These are not fathers. They are not mothers. Many of us, we are deceived. We feel the uh, holding on to God, knowing the Lord is for only the elderly. It's only for the adults. These are young Hebrew children. They were brought up the way you are being brought up now. They were taught the word of God. As you go to Sunday school and you learn this word. They were taught the Bible. They were taught to pray. And yet, at this point in time, with all that they were taught, they didn't allow it to slip off. They did not allow the enticement of this world to take it away from their heart. The word of God that God has used our parents, our fathers, even from the pulpit, you've been taught every day now and then. Where have you thrown them to? Have you allowed the worldly pleasure to overshadow them? These boys were all alone in a strange land. And they took their stand. Even if this God will not deliver us, what we have known, we believe in it. Amen. 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 And many more. My prayer is that as many as do not know the God, the Almighty God, we know Him today. Amen. There are lots of benefits. There is power. You have power. Yeah. You have peace. Yeah. You have wisdom. Yeah. You have freedom, yeah. as it was explained. Yeah. Lot of blessings. <clears throat> you know, when I was very young, my dad, being an uh, S military man, anytime I go to play with my mates, I feel very strong. I feel bold because if you dare touch me, I call an army for you. That gave me the boldness. I could go anywhere. So we are in the hand of God. When we know him, we are as bold as a lion. Amen. We can walk into anywhere. We can do anything. Even when challenges come our way, we are able to stand because we know whom we believe. No wonder Paul said, I am persuaded that he's able to do that which I have committed unto him. Amen. When you know God, you will do exploit. Amen. You will be strong. And above all, you will have a share of eternal life. Amen. Amen. If you have been the type that has known about God, you've known the Bible, you've known it from Genesis to Revelation, and yet you do not know God, it is time for you to establish that personal relationship. And how do you know God? Come to the altar. Acknowledge that you are a sinner. Acknowledge that you don't know him. You only know about him. Acknowledge that you are a sinner and you want to know him. You want to have a relationship with him so that your life will change. So that he will come into your heart and dwell with you. And your name will be written in the book of life so that you can have part to share in that eternal life. Amen. Which he has prepared for those who love him. Amen. Do you want to be part of that family? It is time to come to the altar and pray that you want to know the Lord. Come forward to the altar as we sing CGS 484. CGS 484.
Christ our mighty captain lays against our foe. We will never falter when he bids us go. Though his righteous purpose we may never know. Yet we follow all the way. From God forward, tis the Lord's command. Forward, forward, to the promised land. Forward, forward, we are to win with Christ our King. Satan's fearful onslaught cannot make us yet. Why we trust in Christ our butler and our shade. Perseverance. Spirit's word we win, and we follow all the way. Forward, forward, the Thank you, dear Lord, for the word you have delivered to you, to us. Thank you for the law of liberty. Thank you, Lord, for you want us to know you. You want us to have a relationship with you, Lord. We are at our own our knees praying, Father. Hear today and answer. Hear today and answer, Lord. Save souls this afternoon, Lord. Sanctify as many as looking up to you, Lord. That power, a benefit you promised today. We want to pray that God, you baptize with your spirit today. Amen. Heal the sick, Lord. Amen. Set free those who are in bondage, Lord. Amen. We thank you because we know you will answer above all our asking. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.